blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled Buddhist Stories, the Story of Ananda, the Names of Hells, and the Praise of the Buddha, Part 1 of 11, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on August 10, 2015, in France. Thank you, thank you. It's uh, ready for everybody, right? Live? Already? Good. Hello, everybody outside. <laughs> there are some good news and bad news. Oh. Good news first, bad news first. I stood my light. Gestern habe ich vergessen, um dich zu kommen. Ich habe vergessen, jemanden zu fragen. Jemand für dich übersetzen, ja. Ja, aber, aber es soll sein, aber just, gestern war so viel. <lacht> weißt du, so viel Sachen jeden Tag. Gestern habe ich wirklich, wirklich vergessen. Und dann bin ich nach Hause gegangen, meine ich nach zurückgedreht und dann habe ich gedacht, oh Mensch, habe ich vergessen, diese alte Gentleman. Ich, es tut mir so leid. <lacht> okay. All right. Ja, hast du viele Kinder? Kinder hast du? Ja. Wie viel? Drei. Drei? Ah, weißt du, wie, wie sie dich vergessen macht? Ne? Manchmal, so viele Kinder, vergisst du alles, weißt du? Ha? Sie lässt dich so beschäftigt, <lacht> dass du... Was sie haben zu tun. Ja, und dann, und dann hast du vergessen. Ich auch, ne? Viele Kinder, <lacht> weißt du? Ja, diese Kinder sind schlimmer als deine. Ja. Das ist normal. <laughs> yeah, I asked him if he had children. He said, I have three. I said, you know, when sometimes children make you busy, forget. Yes. Yeah. And only three children and here. You know how many children? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I said, you are even worse than his children. <laughs> demanding, demanding. Yeah. OK, very good. Today you are the rainbow of love. Rainbow? <laughs> you mean this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Just to cheer, cheer me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yeah, but I, I'd be happy when one day I could wear like them. Yeah. Uh, in a few days, man. In a few days only? <laughs> everybody gone. Uh, everybody gone, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean is, if I could wear this even to see you, that the, ka the karma would be allowing me to do that. Maybe in this gathering you, you can... Maybe, maybe, maybe. Why not? I'm not free, <laughs> baby, I'm not free. Okay. My life is not my life anymore. My life belongs to all of you. Whatever affects you, affect me. Yeah, whatever I have to do, I have to do. Yeah, all because of you. I don't have a life. I don't have any freedom. I don't have even freedom to choose my clothes or to wear what color my hair is. 
this is not my liking. Yeah, because when you dye the color, there's some chemical, you know, I don't like. I had to do it. Yeah. I do as less as possible, oh, it's just still, you know? Mm. I don't have freedom, I tell you. I'm free, but I don't have freedom. Nope. <laughs> yep, understand now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's a nuisance, but I don't mind too much. It's just that it's not like I choose to, okay? <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's a small thing. It's not a big sacrifice like Sekamoni Buddha. Hmm? I just want my hair, not my head. Thanks God. Huh? Okay. Okay. Do you want to know who Anan is? Anan. Yeah, Anan, the assistant of Buddha. Yeah. yeah. But do you know who he has been, who he was before that? You want to know? Yes. Just to cheer up a little bit from all these hells. <laughs> we, we have hell in the sutra. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is about Anand, yeah, Anand, the one that told us all these stories, yeah? We are in debt to him. Hmm. If he wasn't there, there was no video, no digital camera, nada. He's the one who brought all this to us. And he was even the one who pleaded with the Buddha to let the nuns come in the Sangha, yeah, because of his mother, yeah. You know, his uh, stepmother, of course, but... So he pleaded with him, say, this mother has been taking care of you since childhood. It is as much as your mom. And she only pleaded to become a nun. You must allow. <laughs> yeah, but the, there has never been nuns before, you know, all these thousands of years. So if the Buddha allowed that, he worried that all the monks will make, you know, like a... <laughs> Uh, revolution, perhaps, or, you know, like unrest, you know, feel unpeaceful. And also worry that in the future, if he make already one concession, other nuns will come, and then maybe the Sangha will be in trouble. Because mostly they're only monks, you see? And when it's so near together, maybe some little conflict or temptation. Yeah, number one. Number two, she's his mother. If she came in, maybe she act like queen in the palace again, you know, and tell the monk, go get my water, go <laughs> and bring me my lunch, you know. Uh, then she, he worried about that, so that's why he didn't want to give permission for none to come in, for for woman to become a, a, a Shanghai member. Uh, also, woman's body is different, you know. Yeah, too too much ascetic. He worry worry the woman cannot bear, yeah? Eating only once a day, sleeping on the floor, and woman body is different, yeah. For also all the future woman who comes in, you know, not just his mother. And the mother was a queen, you know, in the palace. She sleep on rose bed, you know? <laughs> she bathe in perfume, yeah? And she put uh, makeup and jewelry, you know? Very majestic person. If she became a nun, she has only two, three pairs of clothes to cover her body and a blanket, maybe, if have, yeah? So he doesn't think she can bear it. Therefore, he make a lot of condition, you know? <laughs> yeah, that she has to be just like the monk, treated equally, yeah? Furthermore, she has to bow to all the elder monk existed already in the Sangha. In that case, because he worried that being a queen, you know, so used to it being with servants and ordering around, even though maybe she was a very sweet queen, but still she's not used to it, sitting around on the floor and everybody else, elder monk tell her what to do. So he worried like that. So he say, if you want to become a nun, then you have to be subordinate to the monks. Then she accept everything. Whatever he said, he, she okay. So he has to let her. And later on, that's why there's a tra tradition, like even though nuns and monks are equal, but nuns always have to bow to monk. That's what I don't like. My knees feel pain if I do that. <laughs> I don't mind. I did bow before, you know. What I mean is, at the Buddha time, it's different, you know, because she came in later. 
and el- other monks already been with him long time. So of course, they are senior, you know? Then it may be okay. Number one. Number two, the Buddha want to chop chop the ego of the queen, and that's okay, yeah? But uh, man and woman are equal to me. Some woman has more spiritual attainment than any other monk. You see what I mean? A lay man or nun, same. A lay woman also sometimes has more attainment than, than monk, and nun have sometimes more you know, uh, a virtue. So I don't think that tradition should continue, that's all, you know? That's all, that's all, doesn't matter. Mm. Before, I was still wearing a nun's robe, you know? I stay sometimes in a temple, and afterward I already came out and lecture because request. And I passed by and visit the temple again, and the abbot tell me, why don't you prostrate to me? So I prostrated to him, no problem, and I prostrate also to the new monk. <laughs> he said, eh? You prostrate only to me, Master, why you prostrate to him? I said, I prostrate to the Buddha in him, the same as Buddha in you. <laughs> what's, the, what's the big deal with this body? You kneel down or you stand up? It's just a body, right? <laughs> and just now I invited one of the Chinese to my hut. I give her a chair and she don't dare to sit. <laughs> she was kind of kind of nervous and kind of trembling a little bit. She said, No, no, I I I cannot dare sit like this. I just kneel. I said, No, <laughs> don't kneel. It will hurt your knees. <laughs> because there's there's no cushion or nothing on my floor. And it's cement floor only. You know the road? There's nothing. Don't do that. This is only the body. You stand up or you kneel or you lay down, <laughs> it's the same to me. It's just your body, so I know you respect me in your heart, and you show that it's enough. This woman, she meditates six to ten hours every day. No fail. If busy, six hours. Not busy, eight to ten hours. Many quaning hours. No wonder she's so humble, you know. Uh, she knows things. Yeah, the more people practice, the more humble they become. Uh, except your master, she kind of. Not very humble. <laughs> she wear clothes and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, and she said, "Oh, she saw me sleeping under the bed, you know, because <laughs> the bed, the mattress is under the bed. Uh, because originally you make the bed high, you know, so I can even go under there. Not just dogs. It's originally planned for dogs. Uh, dogs stay underneath. I stay on top." So we saved electricity for heater in winter and all that, you know? But right now the big dog is there, and he likes to be alone. He's too big anyway, and then he likes his aircon. So I give him next door, yeah? There's the thing I cover and make an aircon, and the other three dogs in the house. You probably saw them when you take refuse, when it's raining. <laughs> and they're sick now, you know, old and sick, and don't look very pretty. But they still, you know, so strong, wagging tails and stuff. <laughs> And then she saw it and said, oh, it made her heart very painful. I said, but why? Why? I'm very happy here. Why everybody feels sorry for me? I mean, <laughs> what can I do with a big house? I can only s- sleep on one bed, yeah? If a big house, can I sleep Monday, Tuesday, is Thursday? <laughs> Every day different bed or something? <laughs> yeah, just make me more tired walking around. I'm perfectly happy in a smaller place because as I'm so busy, if I have bigger house, there will be more trouble, uh, less organizing space. They are small, but I have everything there. It's, I don't waste too much time yeah, to find my things. What else I need? Yeah? Nowadays, you can work at home anywhere with a telephone and text. And, yeah, so no problem. Don't feel sorry for me, okay? Because that means you don't understand me. I don't care, palace or... Our heart is the same. I stay there because it's a very good spiritual energy right now. But if the house is where it has better energy, I would come in. I don't, I don't care house or not house. I just don't like the house. I prefer not. It feels so, so separated, <laughs> too heavy, you know, cement and stuff. I feel more in the nature, you know, near to the trees and stuff. So the heart will make you nearer. Because you have to walk outside often to wash yourself or to... Because so near. In the house, you would go from one living room to the 
bedroom and then bedroom to the bathroom and bathroom to to the garderobe and then you just all day inside. But if you are in a small hut or tent, you had no choice but to be <laughs> outside often. And very, very happy for me. Very, very happy. Don't ever feel sorry for me. I say, tell us, but why? <laughs> why? A lot of people have no room to go, nowhere to go, no food to eat, no water to drink, and have to bath in the snow because of uh, the war, you know? Children uh, have to walk baref barefoot. When the war comes, you know, many war, some small war broke out of different country, and they have to quickly take their belongings. They couldn't take anything, many things. So children, old elderly women, pregnant women, they all have to live in somewhere there, just a roof on top where the snow is so thick. That is, you shouldn't feel sorry. I am the most lucky woman on the planet. I don't have nobody to force me to live in a palace or in a house. I have my own choice. I can choose to live anywhere I want, anytime, wherever suitable at that moment. I'm a very, very, very fortunate person. I want you to know that once and for all. Don't ever feel sorry for me. That means you don't understand. Okay, the value of the person or master doesn't, doesn't uh, lay on the house, bigger house or bigger temple for her or for him or a lot of stuff. It's not like that. The value is inside. And if I know my own value, <laughs> doesn't matter what I have or not have, it's the same. I'm very happy, okay? But I know you love me and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But don't worry, okay? I'm perfectly happy. Better than if you give me a palace, truly like that, okay? Yes, mm -hmm. Gentle viewers, thank you for joining us for today's program entitled Buddhist Stories, the story of Ananda, the names of hells, and the praise of the Buddha, part 1 of 11 on Between Master and Disciples.